Hello, I'm Raymond Binge. I'll be teaching the class this semester. Uh, welcome to Physics 1404 Solar System. So we'll be doing solar system astronomy. Uh, the textbook that we're going to be using is Universe uh, uh, by uh, Geller, Friedman, and Kaufman. Uh, I don't really think of it as Kaufman, Friedman, and Geller because I knew Kaufman when he did the first three editions of this. And then he passed away. Then Geller took, uh, Friedman took over. And then he retired. Now Geller's taking over. It's actually a really good book. And so uh, go ahead and read it because otherwise, you know, you're not getting everything out of it. Uh, the uh, uh, other thing, in addition to the textbook, uh, is, or rather, the tech, we're going to be doing the first half of the book. Uh, we have two semesters of astronomy at TCC. First semester is going to be the Physics 1404, which is the solar system, which is the first half of the book. Stars and Galaxies is the second half of the book. Uh, now, numbers are weird because the second course is 1403. doesn't really matter which course you take first. Uh, a lot of people take them in reverse order. Some people you actually take them at the same time. So it doesn't really matter. Um, the other thing you'll be needing is uh, this. The technical term for this device is a planisphere. Um, but I always call it a star wheel because the star wheel, because uh, it's a wheel with stars on it. And so what you do is you, you adjust it until you see the date uh, uh, it, uh, matches the time. You're going to be out observing. And then you can hold it up, and it would show you the sky that you look at. If you look in a different direction, you turn it so that, that, that you can see it that way. If you look to the south, you turn the back side and look at it. We'll be talking more about how to use this device uh, to identify things in the sky. So don't worry about it if you don't have to use it just yet. Uh, the other thing you're going to be needing uh, uh, is going to be a calculator. And so you want to have a calculator. And, uh, 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 and then uh, for some of the labs, you're going to need a protractor and a ruler. And so you can get those as well. Basic format of the class, I'm going to be recording lectures and posting them on YouTube. So that way you can watch them on whatever device that you have to watch YouTube. And so I'll be posting these things on YouTube, and, and uh, there will be links from Blackboard to the particular uh, uh, lectures that I'm doing. Uh, some of them will be recorded like this, which is actually a current one for this semester, for the, the spring of 2021. Uh, some of them I'll be borrowing from previous semesters because there's nothing really that changed from what I said then. Some of them I'm not. I'm, I'm, some of them I'm going to change a little bit uh, uh, because some things have changed, or I want to say things a little bit differently. So, I'll be, but I'll be posting the links here uh, so you can keep track of that. Uh, the labs uh, uh, I'm going to be posted online, and and a variety of other things. Um, I'm starting to po populate the uh, Blackboard page right now. They'll be all done actually by the time we start class on Tuesday. So the other thing is that when I post the lectures, I'm going to expect you to respond in some fashion. So I'm going to have discussion boards. On the discussion boards, you're going to have things you need to respond to uh, with the lectures. And so that, that'll be something that uh, will be available for you on Blackboard as well. Uh, the labs, the way we do these labs is uh, uh, we're going to have a computer program called Stellarium. You download, install Stellarium, and then some of the labs use Stellarium. Some of them don't. There'll be a variety of different labs that we do. Now, the way that this class normally is set up on the physical campus when I do this in person is that half the labs are going to be a weekly worksheet type labs in which you're going to be doing uh, things uh, uh, in, in class. Uh, and, and we'll be doing an, an adaptation of those worksheets for you to do at home. The other half, the labs, are going to be we're, we're normally set up as take-home labs. Uh, of course, now you're home, so you'll be still doing them as take-home. But the, the take-home labs are going to be uh, uh, two parts. One part is going to be using the Stellarium software. And so you'll be working through the Stellarium software. Uh, I've posted those labs already for the semester. Uh, um, and then the, uh, the other weekly labs, I post kind of as we go along. Uh, and th they'll be close to where we are in class. They'll be Enforcing some of the material, either that week's lecture topics or the following weeks or previous weeks. 
So they'll, they'll, they'll be tied more closely to the lectures. The, the Stellarium labs are a little bit sort, different sort of thing. And so those two labs go together. So that means roughly two labs a week. Uh, uh, the way we did this in the regular semester was it was roughly two labs a week, okay, uh, uh, two small labs a week to, to get your total lab hours. Uh, so the uh, other labs I have you do, because the Stellarium labs aren't really going to be every week, the other labs are going to be uh, naked eye observations. You actually go out and look at things. One of the labs that's coming up here is uh, in, a, in a month or so is you go out and you count stars and explain why you got the number that you got. Uh, be another lab that you'll be doing which you'll be going out and looking at the moon and looking at it night after night after night and observing the phase of the moon and sketching it and, and then basically holding a ruler out at arm's length to see about how big it looks. And so that's going to be one of the labs you do. And another lab they'll be doing will be looking at stars and uh, uh, constellations. And that's where you'll be using this to identify stars and constellations over the course of the semester. And so uh, you don't know how to use it yet, so it'll take a week or two, and I'll be explaining this in, in class, uh, how we're going to be using this. And then you can go out and start looking at stars and constellations. And the, the, the lunar phase lab and the stars and constellations do at the end of the semester. They're not something you just do in one night, though. The, the, the lunar phase observations takes two weeks to do. Don't wait until the end of the semester to do it. You know, it's like when you, get to, when you learn a little bit about the moon's phases, that's the time to start doing it. Uh, and then hopefully get two weeks straight of reasonable weather. Um, and then the other lab with, with stars and constellations, some of those are not visible at the end of the semester. They're only visible early in the semester. Some are best in the mid-semester. Some are best at the end of the semester. I'll be prompting you as we go along in the semester as to what, what, what's good to do at, the, at that time. Okay, so um, the syllabus gives you basic information about the class, uh, what we do, how we do it, uh, got a, a schedule here of topics related to the textbook. I'll be posting the, the lectures uh, uh, online. We got the labs. Uh, there's also a series of little short essays, little short papers that you'll write. Because every time you do something, you learn something. And so the idea is for these short essays, it's not just, you know, go look up something in Wikipedia and write about it, but rather current news about astronomy. If you've been paying attention the last week or so, there's been a lot of news about astronomy, and so uh, that would be something, you know, any one of those you could have written about and, and, and submitted. Okay, uh, 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 so the idea of current news, so you'd write a one-page summary, a one- or two-page summary, and then, of course, bibliographic citation, because you're in college, and, and submit that. Okay, and, I'll, and, and you can actually work ahead and submit, like, a whole semester at once if you wanted to. Okay. And uh, and then uh, extra credit. Um, you can, if you happen to be bored middle of the night and you're you're just looking at documentaries on Netflix or something, then what you would do is write a summary of what you saw, uh, uh, um, and then then submit that for extra credit. Um, in the regular semester, I would also say you could visit a planetarium or an observatory and, and do some viewings. That's harder to do now with the COVID restrictions that are in place, but some observatories are having public nights online. And, and some planetaria are doing public shows online. And so you're welcome to attend one of these online things and then submit a, a summary of it, turn it in for extra credit. There's also uh, seminars and lectures or TED Talks. Again, online things you can do, turn that in for extra credit. Okay, a summary of it. Um, if you got binoculars, there are certain kind of things you can look at, at binoculars, you know, like, like studying the moon, uh, mapping the moon's, you know, craters and things with binoculars, turn that in for extra credit. If you've got a telescope, same thing. Okay, so the variety of things that can be done. I only accept two extra credit things per week. So that means if you wait until the end of the semester, you only get two or four that you can turn in. If you start now, you've got a whole bunch of them you can do. Okay. Got tests, three tests, and a final. Final counts double. Okay. Now, at the end of the semester, all I do is just add points. And so you need 700 points to get an A. Okay. If you get 701 points, you can stop because you've got an A. 
Okay. Um, if you do anything else, I mean, if, if, you, if you don't get any more points. If you don't take the final, you get a zero and add zero, it doesn't change. So I just add. Okay. Which means if you do all the extra credit things and you do this, that, and the other, you do well and everything, you, you might actually have 700 points by the end of the semester before the final. Okay. The other thing is I have an optional term paper that you can do. Now, a term in, in college means a semester. So this is a semester paper. This is not a paper you write in, in just a few days or a week. This is something you like write over, over, over a month or two. Okay, so so do the research, do a good job. I'll be posting more about that on, on Blackboard before our first day of class, which is actually Tuesday. Uh, so I'll be posting all that for you. And so what you would do is you would uh, write a term paper, <coughs> and uh, that term paper would be the same as a test. Then what I do is I drop the lowest of term paper or a test or half the final. So way of thinking about that is, if you prefer, the term paper, if it's higher than your lowest test, takes the place of it. <coughs> but if it's not higher than your lowest test, I drop the term paper. So whatever one's lowest. Okay, that means even if you write a terrible term paper, it doesn't hurt you. It just doesn't, doesn't help. So the only exception to that would be if you cheated. If you plagiarize the term paper, or you cheat on a test, instead of dropping the lowest grade, I will drop the highest grade, and then whatever grade, final test, whatever final course grade you get, drop you one letter grade. So don't cheat. Cheating is bad. Okay, uh, plagiarism is bad. So. If you avoid that, you're going to actually do really well in the class. Okay, I have a lot of people that make A's in the class, you know, by, by working really hard and doing things. Okay, not by cheating. Okay, so uh, that kind of lays out uh, the basics here. Uh, uh, most people find this to be actually a pretty fun class. It's interesting. I like it. Uh, uh, obviously, went into the field, but um, I, I'm thinking that that y'all should like it as well. And, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll uh, um, you know, have a great time uh, this semester and um, do well. And uh, one other thing, I'll be uh, scheduling a couple of Q&A sessions each week. And so these question and answer sessions, you know, what I've discovered that students that actually attend them typically do a little bit better in the, in the class because they get a little bit of live instruction. The rest of the class is going to be taped, uh, uh, recorded, and then posted online. So those, those Q&A sessions are where you get to actually interact with me and ask questions and get live feedback. And so typically that's helpful. I do record them in case you can't make them, but, but I do encourage you to come to the Q&A session. I'll be posting uh, once the semester starts, you know, to actually Tuesday, I'll be posting uh, uh, the times for those um, and then uh, let you know how that goes. So good luck. Look forward to seeing some of y'all and um, let's have fun learning astronomy.